Welcome to the next installment of Car Ranch with Cruise Hunter Boy, trainer of elite level remote setters and closers, and how you can become one too. So today, guys, I'm going to talk about one of the main questions that I have appointment setters and closers ask me, and it's how can I eliminate and handle any objection? The true question that you should be asking is, how can I ask smart, quality questions earlier in the sales process? Because the biggest fear that a lot of sales reps have is coming to the end of the call, revealing price and the anxiety of whether that person's going to say, think about it, I need to talk to my partner, I don't have the money, or insert some sort of stall or excuse as to why they're not going to buy. But what you really want to be thinking, guys, is what are the main objections that I have in my industry? What are the common things that people say that avoid them from actually getting started? And I've I've basically penciled it down to six main objections that you can write down. Money is one, time, more information, think about it, partner, and logistics. And I'll unpack all of them. So money is whether they can afford it or not. And that's simply solved by pre-qualifying people earlier in the sales process, especially on the appointment setting call or first 15 minutes of the close call. So all you have to ask is where are you at currently income wise? Where are you at currently revenue wise? is the main question and then you can qualify where they're at or you can ask a question let's say this is ticking the boxes and resonating how much money do you have set aside ready to invest in an opportunity like this so you can just ask them up front early in the process and then you know ballpark how much money they have to invest or what range they're at and the type of demographic to see if they qualify financially number two more information this is normally when they have an uncertainty in their mind okay so they have an uncertainty around a question that they need asked, like one of the weekly calls, or they wanna ask more information, like, can you send me more testimonials? Can you send me more case studies? But point blank, this is normally when they have an uncertainty because there's still open loops in their mind and they need questions answered in order to fill the gap to get them to making the decision. So that's a pretty easy one. It's more just asking away their concerns and questions until they feel completely comfortable and secure to get started. Number three is time. So time is, they could be a busy prospect. And normally this is, you, you, can t you can sense this early on in the sales process. If they are a busy single mom or they're already in two to three business coaching programs and they've got a big team and they're very stressed and they're very overwhelmed, that's the vibe that they're giving you. So that's a time objection. So there's, there's two time objections. Time as in how much time do they have in the day? Are they busy and do they even have time to allocate towards your business coaching program or service? Or the other time objection is timing. When are they ready to start? Like how soon? Is this a later or a sooner thing? So is this they want to get started in the next couple of weeks and they've got a massive sense of urgency? Or they're interested in what you offer, but it's not a solution they need for another three plus months. It's not a solution they need right away where they don't have that sense of urgency. So that's another thing with timing or there might be a timing issue with them going on a holiday or wanting to get something sorted for them to be ready to actually go. Okay, so that, that's the first three. The next one is the partner objection. So partner comes with girlfriend, boyfriend, life partner, and then the other one is stakeholders, shareholders, key decision makers within the business that are leaders business partners, people like that, okay? So that's the partner objection. Money, time, more information, partner, think about it. Think about it objection is number five. So think about it objection normally occurs as a smoke screen, and there's normally another underlying objection like one of the ones I've just mentioned. So it's normally when they still have an uncertainty in their mind, and they're you know sitting at a six to seven out of 10 in their decision-making process, but they're still questions for you to ask to dig a little bit deeper and pull up what's the reason why they're not getting started okay so it could be the more information it could be they need to talk to the partner it could be that they're feeling scarce around their financial situation that they can't afford it and they're not really telling you it could be some logistical thing where they need to swap money around so that's the think about it objection it normally comes down to an underlying uncertainty they have and you can cover off on that quite easily by asking the right types of questions or asking a question like is there anything else that you would like me to go over for you to feel comfortable to get started today? So they actually pull up the real concerns and um, what's in the way of them getting started. And finally, guys, is a logistical objection. So a logistical objection is one that occurs like where someone has a logistics type thing that's getting in the way of them getting started. So it could be they need to swap money around to their bank accounts. 
It could be they only get paid on Thursday and then when the money lands in, they can get paid then. So it's a logistical thing. Normally they're in, they're 100% in, they're sure they want to do it, but it's just a logistical thing or they've got money tied up in crypto or somewhere or they need to get something sorted logistically with a business partner shutting a business down and they need to go and do some things in order for them to be in the position to get started. So normally what you can do with people there is you can aim to get them started by sharing your different options of how they can get started or you can get them to sign the agreement and terms and conditions and maybe put down a micro deposit so they can get started today and then maybe start them in two weeks time when they've handled those logistical concerns that they have. But the aim is always to get them started on the one call. But this is the main thing guys, if you ask smart questions on the first 10 minute appointment setting call and the first 15 minutes of the close call before you even transition into presenting the offer, then it's quite simple guys. You won't get objections at the end of the call unless someone is just in a little bit of fear. You would have pulled up the underlying objections and they would have confirmed that they're not gonna be an issue in the way of them getting started. So it's pretty hard for them to again, you know, give you an objection if they've basically confirmed a lot of times, yes, I'm ready to get started. Yes, I don't need my partner to be on the call or any key decision makers. I can make the decision myself or they've got their partners on the call. If they've confirmed you've answered all their questions, if you've qualified them financially or for a finance or funding partner. So that, that's what it comes down to, guys. If you've covered off on those six objections, money, time, partner, more information, think about it, and logistics earlier on in the piece, then it's a smooth transition to the close. So the real question that you should be asking is not how can I eliminate any objection at the end of the call, what's the framework for handling objections and different analogies and stories and metaphors, it should be what are the smart questions I can ask earlier in the sales process to pre-solve any objection that comes my way in order to have a smooth transition to close. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. That, that was a lot in there. That's literally gonna change your whole sales game if you learn the right questions to ask in the, the setting and the earlier piece of the closing call. You, you're gonna easily smash it through any objection. This is why I don't get objections at the end of the call when I don't have anxiety or fear over closing people because majority of people say yes because I've done all the work earlier in the process. Okay, guys, bye for now.